Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the hub day episode number six now. I think we're on. We're pretty much rolling along pretty smoothly. Sorry there wasn't an episode last week. Uh, I've been pretty busy, so therefore I wasn't able to actually record an, uh, an episode. Um, as always, if you've got any uh, you know, thoughts, info, whatever about the show, about what we're talking about, do use that hush hashtag, the hub day. We look at everything you tweet us, so uh, be sure to use that on Twitter. As you can see this week, as always, I'm joined by a special guest in the form of Reese. Uh, he's actually... If I'm not mistaken, the head of Cryptic Gaming. Yep, yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's it. Um, if you want to just give you uh, a little info over who you are and what you do in the, the uh, Call of Duty community scene uh, for the viewers. So, mo well, most people know me because I cast a lot of COD on the PS4 community, um, whether it be through 40Ps or Cryptic Tournaments or random other tournaments, to be honest with you. But I also obviously run Cryptic Gaming, and we literally do everything down from Clan Wars to sending teams to LAN events. So... I'm pretty busy. I do. I have a lot, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I really feel for you because, like me, you're a university student. So not only have you got all your studies, you've got to, like, kind of run a business, sort out tournaments, sort out teams. So I have a lot of respect for what you do. Um, as you can see by the title of today, guys, we're going to be talking about organization, sponsorship, and merchandise. Mm -hmm. Something that doesn't get brought up too much. And obviously, we brought Reese on because he's the perfect person to talk about this as he, you know, pretty much runs his own organization, has to worry about all these different things. And um, it's, it's stuff that's kind of behind the scenes a lot of the time doesn't get talked about and this is to benefit you guys you know if you're thinking of starting an esports organization whether it be for tournaments or for an actual competitive team this may help you out this may get you started with a couple of ideas so um just to kick things off um reese if you could just talk a bit about uh cryptic gaming um any sponsors you have kind of the process you've been through in trying to get them and like is it hard is it is it not hard to get them well, to be honest with you, um, I'll start from the beginning on the, obviously I, I took over Cryptic Gaming a long time ago, probably last June, so June 2014, and my first um, port of call, so to speak, was to get some sponsors. Now, at the time, I approached Cinch and No Scope Glasses because I told that they were easy to get, etc., yeah. and I went for that because it felt like a massive deal because when you play Call of Duty for as long as I have since Modern Warfare 1 or whatever, you know, you never think you're going to get sponsored. But when they use the word sponsorship, you get hyped and you get like, yeah, you know, you use our code and we you know we can benefit and, you know... We will give you money. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is one of the, the no-scope glasses one in particular, you know, they were like, you know, all you have to do is buy five glasses or whatever and then we'll give you a couple free ones. And it feels like a real deal, but then there's lots of terms and conditions and there's kind of, oh, no. Because it was originally, oh, as soon as you get to silver level, I think they call it, then you get free merchandise. However, they didn't tell you there's like a two or three bronzes in between. You just think it goes bronze, then silver, but it's then there's bronze, like bronze, plus bronze, star. 50 different divisions in between. Yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> and, and after that, um, obviously, we've kind of branched on. We also had some offer called K9 Gaming, which that really didn't, didn't go anywhere, to be honest with you. It was kind of like a shop, but obviously we didn't really benefit from that whatsoever. So it got to a stage when we started doing esports a lot more that we needed some more sponsors. And our, our main kind of sponsors, inverted commas now, or partners, I would say, is um, Gamer Gear EU, and it would also be CJ Grips as well. So those are, those are the two main ones. But uh, the process of actually getting them, to be honest with you, it varies between every single business because some want you to have over a thousand subscribers on YouTube, others want 2,000 followers on Twitch. It completely depends on their individual requirements, okay. to be so honest. A, a lot of the times it actually is dependent on the organization, the sponsor, it, it be it, that you're actually contacting. Yeah, 100%. Um, for example, I, I went to um, approach, I think it was um, Razer, the big headset company for mainly PC and things like that. Yeah. And their requirements, you know, were pretty hefty. I think it was about 10,000 subscribers, etc., and Jeez. all that kind of stuff. Whereas when I approached uh, CJ Grips, the requirements were more about regular orders and more of a guarantee over orders than it was to do with any of our subscribers or anything like that. It was more of a, obviously it helps if they see you've got over you know, 1,000 this, 1,000 that, because they know their product's going to get out of there, but yeah. they wanted more of a guarantee that they will ship things because of us. And, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, you talk about Razer. I mean, I, I think we both agree that it... it Obviously, when you're going for the bigger sponsors, they're obviously always going to ask for a lot more than the smaller sponsors. You're not going to see, you know, Scuff going, oh, if you've got one subscriber on YouTube, we'll sign yeah. you up. <laughs> it's not going to happen because that's why it's so exclusive. That's why only, you know, certain organizations have codes for Scuff because they only, you know, want to target the top kind of 
five percent of the market um, in terms of uh, organizations and personalities within in the scene. I think it's the same with Razor as you talk about. You know, they have a quite a high tariff, if you will, um, to get into kind of the band where they will sponsor you, and rightfully so, I guess, because not only have you got to look uh, it. Not only have you got to look uh, about it from an organization who wants to be sponsored, but from the sponsor's point of view, this is kind of going to affect their image. And if they're sponsoring, you know, everyone, you know, your mum's dad's wife or whatever, um, it's not going to look good for their company. They're not going to look professional and, you know, that could downgrade their service and people could go elsewhere. So that's something I think we have to take into consideration. Obviously, you talk about no scope and I think it was, was it Cinch uh, Gaming? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We all know that them two are pretty well known and they're not the hardest um would you say a lot of the times obviously you talked about the the different kind of packages and how as you go up the rankings you, you know you get a better package uh would you say a lot of the time maybe organizations don't realize this and think you know sponsorship means oh they're going to give us free merch they're going to give us this you think a lot of the times organizations don't realize there are t's and c's so I think Cinch's marketing strategy in particular is really, really clever because obviously Scuff are very much for the pros. Um, you have to be top, top tier in order to get anything from Scuff. So Cinch have taken it on their marketing strategy to just approach the amateurs. So they'll sponsor absolutely anyone. And the amount of times I'm scroll uh, scrolling through Twitter and I'm seeing, oh, you know, I'm sponsored by Cinch. Check out Cinch controllers, <laughs> Cinch, Cinch, Cinch. And it's, it's literally like it is Cinch dominated. And <laughs> it's very, very clever from them because they know they can't compete with scuff with the pros because yeah. they that's kind of already contracted up they're not going to get anywhere so they use an alternative strategy and i think it's genius on their ha behalf but for the organizations like us and things like that there's really no benefit whatsoever yeah i think you bring up a really good point in the fact that the scene and in terms of some sponsorships like cinch i think that the scene is very oversaturated where there's so many people with a, an actual code that the reality is Barely anyone is ever going to get a good number of people using their code uh, for you know Cinch products. So, as you say, it's good for the sponsor. I think a lot of the times these um, sponsorship deals do favour the sponsor more than the actual organisation because at the end of the day, the, the biggest thing for them is advertisement, getting their name out there, getting their logo out there, getting you know the customers to know, oh, this organisation uses our pro their their product, they're trustworthy. We should go buy from them. So, I, I definitely feel that's the case. You know, when you talk about so many organizations and personalities and stuff having a cinch code, it's definitely the case. Um, it, it, it sucks for organizations because obviously they'll be similar to the likes of NoScope where every the, every so many codes used, you'll get something free. Um, what do you think of the likes of, um, I mean, obviously as, as an org organization, you don't have like a scuff code, but what do you think about these 5%, 10% off codes? What, uh, do you think they're... You know, something that's good for the scene or bad? Because obviously, as we talked about, if it's, the scene's oversaturated, is your code realistically going to get used? I think it, it really, really does depend on the company. So, for example, I've mentioned our two main sponsors now, and their strategy is very, very different. So, for example, Gamer Gear EU, our code is kind of every time it gets used, we kind of get a percentage back, so to speak. So we actually make that money. It's not like Cinch where it will go okay. towards some imaginary pot. So the 5% yeah, will go to us essentially whereas um, the CJ Grips um, they do 5% uh, off and things like that but we don't get money through that code we get money through the actual products sold so um, the 5% off is kinda like a little bit of a bonus for other people but we already make our money through other means so the 5% off really doesn't mean anything with regards okay. to the Cinch 5% off now um, a lot of people don't realize this but Say, for example, there was someone who wanted to buy a Cinch controller. I mean, there's not a hell of a lot, but there is a few which actually want to go out and buy a Cinch controller. They would be actually better off applying um, to Cinch themselves for a sponsorship as a no one, if they've got no YouTube, whatever, getting a 5% off themselves and then just using it for themselves. So it's kind of when that is <laughs> yeah, the case, yeah, when that's the case, it defeats absolutely... the object of sponsors. Yeah, it's it's really not a sponsorship because okay. it applies to absolutely everyone and anyone. So, but it's it's what like, I feel really bad for the up and coming you know clans or organisations who say they're sponsored because yeah you know, I've made that same mistake. I used to say that I was sponsored by Cinch and Nerskos because it was such a big deal, and then you actually like hindsight yeah. is a wonderful thing, and then you realise well hang on a minute we get nothing like we're <laughs> no more sponsored. We're not, we're than, not making anything on this. Why are we sponsored but, with them? 
Well, there we go. It's, it's really not a sponsorship. It's more like a, I don't know, they're taking everything from you with your promotion, and that's it, and they, we don't get anything in return. So it's a bit sane. Okay, what I will ask, though, is obviously you talk about sometimes, obviously in hindsight, you talked about the sponsorship isn't actually as great as it seemed. Do you think it's still good in the sense of other sponsorships looking at your organization saying, hey, they're sponsored by this, this place, this place, this place. They're, you know, a, a quite a credible team. So do you think in that sense it can be quite rewarding? You know, other sponsors seeing that you're sponsored by other sponsors and thinking, hey, you know, I think we can sponsor them. You know, our, these other sponsors obviously trust them. I think we can do the same. Do you think it works in that sense? I think it's very much a domino effect with the right sponsors. So, for example, if we see the likes of a team saying, oh, I'm sponsored by Cinch, other companies are going to look at that and they're just going to think you're a little bit of a mug. Okay. If, for example, <laughs> if, for example um, like when we got the Game of Gear one, like it was a big step because it was like, right, well, not everyone can get that. Yeah. And then the grips came in straight after because they looked at it and went, well, hang on a minute, You've, you go into LAN events, yeah. you've got your own jerseys. Like, yeah, we want to be a part of this. So it can be a real domino effect for the right sponsorships. So when I was looking around at renewing certain sponsorships, because obviously we got a lot bigger and things like that, yeah. the main thing for me was looking for those exclusive sponsors. The exclusive ones were important because once you've got one of them, it's a real domino effect because they'll just follow and follow and follow because they'll all want to be a part of it. So you get jerseys and then you get grips and then perhaps a headset company is going to come along and be like, all right, no worries. And then a controller company, so Nifty Customs, someone like that, they can come along and you can kind of just get all of these companies involved because of the domino effect. But you've just got to be so careful on the sponsors that you choose, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes um, complete sense. Um that's quite interesting actually you talk about the domino effect because it, it, it does make sense because obviously you know there, there's bands of sponsorships obviously you talk about if you have cinch it's a bit kind of everyone has it but obviously if you've got the more um, exclusive sponsorships it's good but what do you think about sponsorships in terms of jerseys then because obviously a lot of the time you'll see this that and the other on their jerseys and um i mean i don't know do you have any sponsors on your jerseys at all yeah, well, we don't really have sponsors per se. I mean, obviously, the grips, the yeah. sponsors on that front, they're on it's there. More but discount codes yeah. and stuff but like that. But generally speaking, it's we just put partners um, on the back of the jerseys because I would rather have partners with regards to obviously because I co-own 40P. I've put their logo on the back because it promotes them as a brand and it's kind of like a mutual benefit. Same for the esports hub. Their logo is on the back of ours because obviously um, the esports hub fund some of our tournaments and things like that. So okay. it's more about we decided to do uh, put companies on the back of our jerseys which acted as a mutual promotion. So, for example, um, I say to the esports hub, right, we'll put your logo on the back if if we get to LAN, um, not if we get to LAN, if we get on screen at LAN, you tweet it out, you update everything and things like that. It's all about mutual promotion because yeah. I would rather have that than have the likes of Cinch or No Scopes on the back he'll, of my jersey because... Yeah, it's kind of like an instant credibility ruiner. People, I think, from the outside, if you turn up at a LAN, uh, LAN event, um, Anti Pro, whatever, and you've got Cinch on the back of your top because you've got a 5% discount, teams are going to look at you and they're just going to be like, wow, and yeah. probably just laugh. Whereas if you've got some different stuff, so even though the Esports Hub isn't you know, universally renowned or 40p, etc. It's still kind of people go, well, you know, what's that? And it kind of gets them thinking. And that's the idea of having something on the back of your jersey. It will kind of makes people want to actually go out and have a look at it to begin with. Whereas the likes of Cinch and No Scope, you're just going to laugh at someone, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, an, an interesting point. Obviously, yeah, the mutual agreement, that I, I find that quite interesting. I don't think we have that enough in the community. And obviously, what you have. Uh, between Cryptic and the, uh, the eSports Hub is aw awesome. Um, you know, I think uh, there are a lot of organiza organizations out there that are just, you know, willing to just promote eSports and help each other out. So I think if you find the right organizations, it can definitely work. Um, you obviously talk about uh, 40p, uh, what you, I think you co-own or you're, you're obviously mm -hmm. a part of it. Um, do the sponsorships and, or if there are any, uh, differ over there? Because obviously it's more, it's not a team-based thing. Because obviously Cinch and No Scope, some of these are obviously for, um, you know, teams and organisations that have players that play uh, console games and various things. But obviously with tournament providers, it obviously differs a bit because yeah. although they're still in gaming, they're not actually competing. They're providing a tournament source. So does it differ at all? It, it really does differ on the respect of do you want a tournament to kind of 
be sponsored. And, and what I mean by that is you don't want it to seem partisan or you don't want to kind of pollute the tournament with respect to forcing yourself to promote a product which could ruin your credibility. So you've got to think very, very long and hard, whereas an organization, like a lot of the time people just take what they can get. They'll be like, yeah, 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 no worries, no worries. But say, for example, um, we've, we've been approached by a couple of companies who said, yeah, you know, we just want you to play a couple of videos in between stream games, etc. And we've had a look at the videos and they're, they're terrible. And yeah. you think, right, that could be detrimental, uh, detrimental <laughs> to our product. So yeah. it's very, very different there. But the thing is, is it can also be a lot easier to get sponsors if you run tournaments. I mean, you had a big debate a couple of weeks ago about Twitter tournaments and things like that, like everyone's starting it up and things. And, you know, it's because when you own your own tournament, you get a lot more viewers on stream. You kind of open up a whole new world on that front. But you've just got to be so careful because if your tournament is seen as illegitimate or, you know, false, you're just going to lose teams so, so quickly. So you've really got to think of, like, obviously Cryptic is a organization and it is a bit of a business but a tournament host a dedicated tournament host is more of a business because it can be you know a big source of income and things yeah, like that it just it all depends and it's you have to put a lot of thought into it yeah so in a way tournament providers you have to obviously take a lot more time to actually think about right who do we want to actually kind of resemble our organization who do we want to be surrounding because as you say you know if they are wanting you to post videos and stuff in between tournaments and games it's like if your video is you know rubbish it just gonna yeah. it's gonna you know the, the view is just gonna go elsewhere so i i totally yeah. agree with that um we're gonna get into some thoughts uh from the community what you guys said on twitter um if i just quickly get it up um so the first one is coming in from actually red devil we had him on uh two weeks ago uh, obviously a part of am2 pro they got an up and coming event do do uh do check that out you can find it somewhere on the internet and he basically starts off by saying in regards to sponsorship organizations etc he says um all depends on whether it actually benefits if it's both parties or mostly those who are sponsoring in quotations and people also um, need to be clear on the difference between partnerships and sponsorships with deals can be both they are different though um, well I think it's a really good valid point uh, if we look at the first bit first um, obviously we've talked about it you know does a sponsor really benefit both parties you know obviously when we're talking about cinch it's very apparent they only benefit cinch because the the scene is so um saturated with codes from e everywhere that realistically organizations can't make a profit um do you want to touch on that comment at all as i said earlier it's it's cheaper for you to actually get sponsored yourself because you yeah. can get sponsored and buy a cinch controller than actually use someone else's code so it's, it's com it completely benefits Cinch and, you know, it is a bit of a trap. You do make a good point, though, obviously. Basically, the moral of the story from Reese is you want a you wanna Cinch code uh, or a Cinch uh, controller. You, you don't have the money to buy a scarf. Just get your own code, basically. Um, what's, you know, it, it makes sense if they're that, e that easy to get. Uh, then if we touch on the second comment, obviously, um, Red Devil is talking about um, the difference between sponsorships and partnerships. I don't know if you can touch on this a bit. I'm not sure exactly what he means, but have you had any kind of um, you know, sponsorships or partnerships that have you know, differentiated yeah. from each other? There, there's a big difference. I don't really differentiate on partners and sponsors. I mainly differentiate between sponsors and affiliates. Okay. Because affiliates are literally cinch, no scope, etc., where you you're kind of affiliated with them in the respect of you just promote the hell out of them and don't really get much back. Whereas a sponsorship is kind of like a, a mutual team where they will promote you, you will promote yeah, them, and you'll go out there they're... and really help each other. Yeah, I was gonna say sponsorship. I feel like you know they they need to be giving more, whereas affiliation is more benefiting the sponsor because you're probably lesser known. You're wanting to get out there and. You know, you're doing all the hard work, if you will. But I think it's an interesting point. Obviously, if anyone is watching this and thinking about starting up an organization, you know, definitely hit up Reese or, you know, take on the advice that we've been talking about because at the end of the day, it could cost you crucial sponsors or stuff. And in the long run, it's going to look bad. So just be very careful about, obviously, the sponsors you do choose and uh, how you do go about your business. Uh, next comment, though, is coming in. Uh, from I can't actually read the app, but I'll put it down below. Uh, they basically say teams that um, teams that plaster it all over their social media and graphics, thinking they're sponsored by a company slash product, uh, when in reality it opens to all, regardless of who you are and what you do. It's like false advertisement, and I think this is obviously going on about um, organisations that uh, or you know companies that you know you can basically get 
a sponsorship or a code from regardless of who you are and then they obviously plaster it all over their social media and everything thinking that oh i'm big now i'm you know sponsored by this one reality everyone has that and i think again we can relate back to cinch uh because as you talk about you know everyone has a code near enough so what advice would you give to someone like that well to be honest with you i'd say that although people will kind of look down on you for putting it on your graphics and things like that i've done it you know, on our old first ever YouTube intro that we had made, you know, Cinch logo was there, No Scope logo was there, on our graphics, like our little banners, you know, their logos were there, and everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah. So there's no shame in that because you might get lucky. Someone might actually come along and buy a controller and use your code. You don't lose anything by, by, not, yeah, by doing having, that. Yeah. It's, everyone has to start somewhere, and at the end of the day, you know, You've just got to be careful on not being a bit of a muppet about it. So if you, I've seen people, for example, on Twitter, as soon as they get that sponsorship, they're like, oh, I'm sponsored, blah, 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 and they go absolutely insane. And it can kind of uh, bite them in the backside because they, they look a little bit silly and a little bit stupid. But if they do it correctly and they just kind of go about their business and just say, look, you know, if you are going to get a sense controller, just use my code. You know, there's lots <laughs> of codes and all that kind of stuff. But you never know. You might get lucky. One person might come along and just be like, you know what, I really enjoy your little streams, I really enjoy your little YouTube channel, even if it's like 50 subs, whatever, you know, I'm going to try and support you, and, you know, you might get lucky, so everyone has to start somewhere, so just, yeah, try it out. Yeah, that's a very valid point, obviously, no one just gets big, you know, from the start, no one just, you know, hits the big time, um, and obviously... If you are wanting to start out, I definitely take on the advice that Reese has given. Uh, it's very kind of insightful, you know, from someone who's actually, you know, been there at not the starting stage, but kind of the early development and, you know, has nurtured his organization to where it is now. So, I mean, would you, I mean, almost recommend them doing, getting these codes, even though obviously to you now as a more developed organization, they're kind of not worthwhile. But obviously for someone who's just starting out, you know, a cinch and a no scope, you know, code seems a lot more professional than no sponsors. Well, the thing is, is um, with our no scope, the reason I found out about the Bronze Plus and Bronze Star and all that kind of stuff is because people in um, my organization, you know, went out and tried to help us out because obviously they were part of it and they wanted us to grow. So they went out and bought these glasses and things like that. And, you know, we did get a little bit back. I think we only got something like you know 15 quid back over the space of six months it's but still it's still though. exactly it's yeah, still a little it's... bit extra so as i said everyone has to start somewhere yeah. it's not going to look overly impressive and you're not going to look very unique but it is a start and the moment which you start approaching sponsors is a moment where you kind of tell yourself look you know i want to take this seriously because the amount of clans or organizations that i have known in the past who have just done nothing for so long yeah you know it's they just don't do anything you need so, to continuously yeah. progress basically yeah, you've got to take everything as a stepping stone. So cinch yeah. is the first stepping stone, and then you just build from there over time. So Awesome. Um, I'm going to leave uh, it kind of on one last question from myself. Um, obviously, we talk about you know teams that are just starting out, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera, but I want to look at it from another perspective because obviously let's look at it from the actual sponsor's perspective. They're going to be looking at your organization, looking at how appealing it is. Do you think... Um, you know your graphics and your logo and your just presentation in general and how you you know, handle yourself on Twitter and your professionalism plays a big part in sponsorship. Obviously, you know, say you have got fifteen quid from Cinch over so many months. At the end of the day, that could be the difference between revamping your social media and not revamping it. So, do you think yeah. it's quite a crucial thing to make sure that you know your logo and your graphics are just on point and you know look really appealing? Um, I think it really does depend. I don't think it's a case of they have to look phenomenal and, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. But they can't <laughs> be, for example, like there are certain teams I know who have just got, like, naked women as, as their banner and things like Precisely. that. And well, it's not you think, you know, you think if, some, if a sponsor does approach you, you can have, like, 15,000 followers on Twitter and you can be absolutely huge. But, you know, if you don't look the part, you're <laughs> not going to get approached yeah. because you have to remember there are so... Like, my organization has just under 900 Twitter followers. It's nothing. And I know a different organization who have got 16,000 followers on Twitter, but they've been tweeting for a month. We've been tweeting for six months. So, you know, it's, it's to do with everything. It's yeah. not just graphics. It's to do with how legitimate you look, yeah. you know, completely to be honest with you but yeah graphics definitely do help we revamped everything and after those revamped then sponsors did start to come in but yeah. i don't think they kind of went hand in hand you know as it's such just they didn't lucky think timing 
Yeah, completely. They didn't say, oh, you know, they look nice, and then did it. They looked at our stats and analytics and what we can provide and the YouTube subs, the Twitch followers. They looked at everything we did on that front and then kind of made a balanced decision. But you've, I'd say looking the part definitely does help, and being professional is so, so important. Because as I said, if you've got a naked woman as your Twitter banner, you know, the chances are a sponsor's <laughs> going to look at that and go, um, no, because no. it sends out the wrong <laughs> message. Awesome stuff. Uh, well, thank you for your input. Obviously, t I'd say take on board what Reese has said. He's been there. He's been through it. He's very knowledgeable. That's why we wanted to get him on. You know, we want to inform you and help you make better decisions and, you know, just basically give you more knowledge about the scene and you know i know there are a lot of kind of aspiring org owners it's very apparent um just you know take on board some of what reese has said you know he knows what he's talking about he's not just here for the sake of it um you know maybe a twitter revamp could be something that would help you you know to take on board what we've talked about in terms of the lesser known sponsors compared to uh, the ones that are easy to get um uh, because obviously for reese's case in cryptic gaming it has made a little bit of a difference um but this is pretty much going to do it for this episode of the hub date episode number six already um as i said at the start do use that hashtag the hub date to let us know anything you thought about this week's topic and also you know give us suggestions for the coming weeks of um you know what we can talk about what you want to hear us talk about what guests you want us to get on, etc. Um, massive thanks to you, Reese, for coming on. Uh, I really do appreciate it, yeah, and I, I wish you all the best with uh, Cryptic Gaming going forward. Um, I think we'll leave links and everything down below for them. Um, if you want to just say anything, any sponsors, any affiliations, uh, do your outro. Um, my advice would be, generally speaking, um, like I've been there and I have done it, and I know how hard it is. Obviously, I took over Cryptic when it had already been around for a year, and they done absolutely nothing so I know how hard it is to build things up but you know it's just a case of you really do have to stick with it you really do have to take things in your stride and you have to think of everything as a stepping stone even now the sponsors I get they're stepping stones to going you know bigger so to speak no disrespect to our sponsors currently obviously but it's just a case of you need to kind of build things gradually you're never going to get sponsored by scuff straight away you're never going to go to the top straight away it does take graft and just take it in your stride and at the end of the day as i said i've been there but you know if you want it badly then you'll get it and i haven't even got it yet but it's just about putting the work in to be honest Awesome stuff. Well, thank you again, Reese, for coming on. Uh, I've been Tommy, your host as always. Um, again, use that hashtag, the hub date, if you, you know, you have any topics you want us to discuss, any opinions on what we've talked about today. Uh, but this is pretty much going to do it for this episode, guys. Do you leave that like, um, click that like button as much as you can. Um, and also do subscribe to the eSports Hub. I think they're coming close to their... their um, milestone for releasing the next trailer or the actual montage that they're in creation and I, I i'm pretty sure you're gonna like it i'll say that much but as, as always guys um this has been the esports hub or the hub day even um and i've been tommy and we'll see you next week goodbye <laughs>